Well, hello, and welcome to my latest video. It's movie review time. The Many Saints of New York. What's it like? Is it any good? Should you spend your money, stick around, and you'll find out. Now, top five TV series of all time, as recommended by moi, Jules. Uh, number five, and we are going down in uh, descending order. No, we're going up in ascending order. At number five, ladies and gentlemen, yes, Mad Men, that uh, series about the American advertising industry. At number four, straight in, Brideshead Revisited. Yes, showing my age a bit, but, you know, I still think it's wonderful. Number three, uh, yes, we're going back to the States, and it's The Wire with uh, Idris Elba in his first, first? Well, one of his first great starring roles, and of course, Dominic West as well at number two. Yes, and this may surprise you, Breaking Bad, who can forget Brian Cranston as a science teacher of all things. Uh, uh, not his main job, you understand. And in at number one, yes, it's got to be The Sopranos. That uh, 72 episode, was it? I think about a New Jersey Italian mafia gangster family led by the great Tony Soprano, or rather led, led by Tony Soprano, played by the great, late Tony Ganf Gan Gandolfini. Was it Tony? A little bit confused there. So, The Many Saints of New York is a prequel to the greatest TV series ever made. And I'm going to start with not bad things, but a, a few of the things I wasn't quite so keen on with this film before I get on to the things about was keen about. And the first of those I want to mention is the title. I just don't think the title is very good. There are many saints. Well, they're not saints. Um, yeah, there's quite a few of them. Uh, they are based in, New Jer in Newark, but you've got, to, you know, you've got to be fairly well up on your Sopranos and your Americana to know that uh, Newark is in... Um, uh, New Jersey, uh, and not that place on the M1, is it near Nottingham? Uh, so that's the first thing, and, and it doesn't give a flavour or an explanation of what the film is about. Does it need to? In some respects, I think it should. Now, what could they have done? I suppose they could have called it Alto Soprano, they could have called it Mezzo Soprano, they could have called it The Baritones, they could have called it The Early Days of the Sopranos, but I can understand in a way why they didn't. They wanted to make it a standalone film, which to a certain extent, and I will get on to that, it is. Uh, number two is... I've got, I've got to say it. This film is essentially about the early days of Tony Soprano, and he is played by uh, Tony Gandolfini's son, who is called Michael Gandolfini. And although he doesn't have a vast amount to do in this film, because the film is about what happens around him rather than specifically what he does, I just don't think he's a particularly great actor. And again, I can understand why they cast him, but mm, perhaps they could have done better. Number three is, and I'm going to go to my notes here, one of the stars of the film uh, is Ray Liotta. Now, I can understand why they wanted Ray Liotta. He's a big name. He's well known, of course, for Goodfellas, another Italian-American gangster film. But he doesn't quite strike the right note in this film. I'm not entirely sure why. It might partly be because uh, he plays two roles, one of whom gets killed and one of whom survives. And you, I can't understand why they use the same actor for two roles. Maybe I'm missing something, right? I mean, maybe it wasn't the same actor, but it looks suspiciously like Ray Liotta to me. Now, I'm sure. In fact, I'd quite welcome you to put in the comments down below why you think they use the same actor in two different roles, because I'm a little bit confused about it. The next thing I wasn't entirely happy about um, is the film, at least in the beginning, not throughout the film, but at least in the beginning, is narrated uh, by Christopher Moltisanti. And if you know your Sopranos, you will know that Christopher Moltisanti was killed towards the end of The Sopranos. And I'm sorry if that's a plot spoiler for you, but I haven't really got much choice. So he is narrating the film, uh, having already said in the film, uh, this happened before I was murdered. And I don't know, it, that, that smacked a little to me about Bobby Ewing in Dallas. And, you know, remember you know, his death always turned out, or it turned out that it was all a dream all along. And, and I just think, mm, doesn't quite strike the right note. So 
That's four things, and I'll add another one, actually. Corey Stoll, uh, who I remember from House of Cards and has been in quite a few things, uh, is in it, and I'm not quite sure how he fits into it, because Corey Stoll, if he's anything to me, is not an Italian-American, uh, and he plays one of the Italian-American brothers, so I didn't quite understand that. I'm not saying he's bad, and he's not a particularly big role. I, I just didn't quite work out what he was doing there. Anyway, having given a few of the things that I wasn't so keen about, let me give some of the things that I was keen about, and let me start with the first one, and I thought this film was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed it. Now, I went to the Dulwich Picture House, as usual, my favourite place to see a movie. Unfortunately, my favourite movie buddy, my son Joel, has gone back to university, so I had to go on my own. Boo, boo, boo. Uh, the cinema was by no means full, actually. In fact, I would say it was virtually empty, so maybe uh, people just don't know what this film is and maybe because it was the first day it hasn't really got the publicity that it deserves to have. Anyway, I'll leave that to one side. But I really enjoyed the film. Beforehand, I had to sit through a trailer for the latest Bond film, No, Dime to, no Time to Die. And oh my fucking sweet Jesus, does that look like the most boring piece of Brexit shite you've ever faced in your life. I mean, how is it possible for somebody to make the same film 35 times in a row and for people not to say, hang on a minute, you know, we've seen all this, you know, we've seen, we've seen the tuxedo, you know, we've seen the update of the sexist attitudes, we've seen the, the baddie who wants to take over the world. In this one, in this one, it's played by Remy Malik, and they always have bad skin, don't they? Why, why is it that and our baddies, Sorry, just playing with my microphone there if I made a bit of a noise. Um, do, do baddies grow up to be baddies because they had very bad skin as children? Or do they develop bad skin when they become baddies in a bit kind of um, picture of Dorian Gray way, if you know your Oscar Wilde? So, and, and I, you, you think, is this the best bits of the film that they can find to put in the trailer, you know, a bit of banging, a bit of shooting, a bit of Aston Martin, a bit of jumping off a bridge, a little bit of a, uh, a woman in a split skirt and a certain amount of cleavage, but not too much because it's probably a 12A. Eh? And oh, my sweet Jesus. Now, The Many Saints of New York is nothing like that. It's not a CGI fest. It's not like Shang Tsi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. It's not about fighting somebody who wants to take over the world. It's, it's about an Italian-American family in New Jersey and what happens to them before Tony Soprano becomes Tony Soprano. And I am really glad that they made it in this way and I don't have a problem with them making a kind of Soprano-themed film. I thought the, the little kind of sequel that they made for Breaking Bad um, to me, that just didn't work. I, 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 I thought that it was almost like they said to themselves, we didn't quite finish the story, so we're going to make another episode and finish the story. And I really wish they hadn't done that. But with this, I, I don't mind at all, because they take, they take many of the same characters. They don't do that thing with the Irishman with Robert De Niro where they try and use the old actors and make them look younger. They use different actors because they're concentrating on different part of the story. The story is primarily about uh, Richard Moltisanto, in other words, Chris Moltisanto's father. Uh, and I won't say what happens to him because I'm not really in the business of plot spoiling, but let's say it explains why he was did the series of The Sopranos, make of that what you will. So it concentrates on his kind of uh, rise and to a certain extent fall as an Italian-American gangster who is a brother of one of the uh, uh, Sopranos who subsequently, or mother who is the father, of Tony Soprano. I hope that you're following this. Uh, so it's about um, interactions, riots uh, with the black gangsters who rise up in this part of New York in the uh, late 60s. 1967 primarily is when it's set. Not only. It's sort of 67 to early 70s, I'd say, because you see uh, Tony Soprano go from about 14 to about 18 or 19 or something. And it's sort of about how he's not going to get involved in a life of crime. And then it's sort of about how he does become involved in a life of crime. But as I say, the story isn't primarily about Tony Soprano. It's about these other people. And it creates, and this is one of the key wonderful things about the film, it creates a milieu, a ambience 
of now I wasn't I'll be honest I wasn't in Newark New Jersey in 1967 so I can't say for certain this is exactly what it was like but I imagine this is what it is like and it was like and they have beautifully recreated it and the next thing I want to say uh, about the film is the music the music is stunning now if you're of a certain age you like music of the mid to late 60s you are going to just sit back and luxuriate in this film because the choice of music is absolutely superb the next thing is is the depth of the film the depth of the characters and how they how they examine these different aspects of their lives and draw it all together into an, an exciting interesting story do you need to know the story of the sopranos y yes and no you don't need to uh, but there's a lot of things in the film that won't make a vast amount of sense unless you have seen The Sopranos. So it's not essential, but I would say it's advisable. And if you haven't seen the series of The Sopranos and have therefore missed out on what is, in Julian's humble opinion, the best TV series ever produced or screened, if you like, uh, then what have you been doing with your life? And if you haven't seen it, would you necessarily want to go and see The Many Saints of, New of Newark? I'm not quite sure that you would although I would recommend that you do because I think it is a wonderful film the reason incidentally why I thought The Sopranos was a greater TV show than Breaking Bad and I'll be honest say I probably enjoyed great Breaking Bad more but I think The Sopranos is a greater show because of the the sweep of it the depth of it the range of characters the range of different storylines essentially uh, the Bre Breaking Bad is a single story which covers a lot of episodes and it covers a lot of different story arcs but it is the same story so the Sopranos is not quite the same story there are a number of different stories in it and in that sense I think it's a greater achievement than Breaking Bad because of the sweep of it and this and, and they've shoehorned into uh, two and a quarter hours uh, what could have been and who knows may still well be uh, a, a TV series not of 72 episodes but of quite a number of episodes so uh, I've done a little bit of rambling, I've gone a little bit off the topic, but I want to get back to the key point, and that is I think The Many Saints of New York, despite my misgivings about the title, is an absolutely wonderful, superb film. The acting is very good. Ray Liotta's acting is very good. I'm just not quite sure what he's doing in this film. It doesn't quite fit for me. And there's a, there's, there's a, there's a scene where, where Ray Liotta is in jail and um, Richard Moltisanti goes to see him. And uh, Ray Liotta says, next time you come, or uh, he says it in a kind of uh, Newark, New Jersey, uh, Italian-American accent, which I'm not going to try and do. Uh, he says, can you bring birth of the cool? And Richard Moltisanti says, what's that? And Ray Liotta says, uh, it's jazz. I like jazz. And you think, cool, that's deep. And then you think, no, Actually, no, it's not. He's, he's just saying he likes jazz. He, he, wants, he wants him to bring a Miles Davis record. So it kind of pulls you up short in a way. You think, oh, this, this is the clue to the whole film. This is, this is Rosebud, you know. Um, but I don't think he's Rosebud. I think it's just he likes, he likes jazz. He's in jail. He likes jazz. And he's got a record player, as you do in uh, New Jersey. And uh, he wants to listen to Miles Davis. So why not? So on that particular coda, um, I thought this was a great film. I think it is really worth your money. I think you should go and see it. I think you should go back to the cinema. And I always say to people, go back to the cinema. Go and remind yourself of what a wonderful experience it is to sit in a cinema and get immersed in this film, in a, in a film. And I certainly got immersed in The Many Saints of New York. So thanks for watching and see you next time.